However, there are tariq. Tariq are the rules inside the qira'ah. So let's say, for example, warsh. In warsh, we have a tool. We use the, this, this elongation. Now, if you make elongation, you can also do qasr, which is short. But you can't do elongation and qasr. So the route that you chose, that that student chose to recite from, that he, he can't do the both of them, so he does one. That's the tariq that he's teaching. You understand? Does that make sense? For example, if somebody says, ha but it also you could say, ha You can't do both at the same time. So the one who chose to do, ha like that, just for the word, He's going to teach that way. But another t student, he's going to teach ha'ula'i. Maybe he has a t student that has asthma. So he teaches him to say ha'ula'i. And that's the narration that he goes through. And that's the tariq that he takes. And so they might get an argument. Hey, well, every time I'm I say ha'ula'i. You can't say that. <laughs> like in Hafs. Hafs does a lot of qasr. Because you hear husri doing it that way. But at the same time, you can make it tool. A lot of people don't know that. You can make it six. It's allowable. But because one thing is allowable and another thing, if you do that, becomes unallowable, that tariq, whichever one you choose, and there's a rule. You have to do, if you do it one way in this place, in that same, in another instance, when you come in that same instance, you have to, uh, you come at another place in the same situation, you have to do it the same way. For example, if you start off and you say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. They have to be together. You can't say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You see the difference? I said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, and I made it short. But I started off by saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You see? So if I extend it in one place, I have to extend it in all the other places that are like it. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to go through it like that. Here, the tariq refers to the rules that the direct student of the Rawi chose to stick to. Okay? A warsh, according to the tariq of Al Azraqi. That's the, that's the route we're going. Okay, we're going to go if you want to know the tariq of Al-Azraqi. Okay, if you want to know of Hafs according to the tariq of Abu Muhammad ibn, ibn al-Sabah. Okay, his name is Ubaid. Ibaid ibn Ubaid al-Sabah. Okay, so we're taking that route. And Khalaf according to the tariq of Ahmad ibn Uthman. Rahimahumullahu jami'an. But those names don't mean nothing to you right now. It's not, it's not even a big deal, but we want to know. Now, reason why I did that go up is because what people think is qira'a, what people think is riwaya, what people think is tariq is really just tilawa. Okay? What people hear all the time when one person says, A'udhu billahi minash rajim. And then another person says, A'udhu billahi minash rajim. They think that's different qira'ah. It's not different qira'ah. There are different modes of tilawa. There are four modes of tilawa. The first one is called tahqiq. The first one that I did, a'udhu billahi minash rajim. That's called ta'limi or tahqiq. It's to teach the student. It's done in a slow, deliberate manner. All of these keep, keeping hold to the rules of tajweed so that the student can hear it and understand what letters are being said. It's called the first style of tafsir because the tafsir of the Quran is explained to you what the Quran is. Here you're being explained to what the letters are and how to recite them. Okay? So, tahqiq is to recite the Quran in a slow, measured way, educating the listener in the process of exactly what letters are being said and exactly how long to hold them. So, for example, someone would say, A'udhu billahi minash rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This is tahqiq. So the student can hear it. Okay? The next one is tartil. Waratil al-Qur'ana tartila. 
And this is the one that is most famous because people do this every day in the Maghrib and the Isha and the Fajr. Right? He says, to recite the Qur'an in a melodically measured format, not trying to teach, but with a mind to help the listener, ref the listener reflect as to what he's listening to. The, the tartil of the Qur'an is, like he said, is to recite it melodically, not trying to educate you to the letters, but trying to let you feel and understand, like they say in New York, can you feel me? You know, so that you can feel what's being said with heart. You know, so you can hear those, the message being there, taking it for granted that people don't understand Arabic. People, if they understood Arabic, instead of sitting there saying, wow, it sounds good, they would be hearing. And when your Lord said to the angels, I'm making in the earth a Khalifa, they said, are you making an earth? See, they're listening to the story. So he's reciting to them a story. That's tortil to recite it in a melodic manner, giving the story to the people so they can hear it. So, that would, so that's a different way of reciting. Everybody got me? Now let's go down. Oh, we got it, I'm sorry. Tadweer. Tadweer is to recite the, the Quran melodically, but faster than one would normally do when they're, they're around someone unfamiliar with the Quran. Okay? This is usually done when someone is reciting by himself or reciting to one of his teachers. When you go sit with your teachers, he ain't got all day to play games with you. He's got a gang of students, you know? And he ain't got patience. You should have studied over there. Go sit down. Let somebody else come up who's prepared, right? So you sit down, and you're not going to go really fast, but you're going to go, I'm <clears throat> sorry. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iya can a Buddha, Iya can a stain. Ehdina Sirotal Mustaqim. Sirotal Ladina and Amta Alehim. Wayri al Magdubi Alehim. Alif Lam Mim Thalika al-kitabu la raib Fihi hudan lil muttaqeen That is going to be called tadweer Because you're going a little bit faster Okay? Now hadr is to recite the Quran in a fast manner You're not playing games here You're reciting This is usually done when a student is reciting the Quran by himself So he goes, but he's, he's doing it and he's not leaving off the rules. So he'll sit down by himself or with his student, another student, and he's just reviewing. A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, ar rahmanir rahim, maliki yawmiddin, iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem, sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim ghayri al-magdubi alayhim waladhalleen alif la. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم and so on so on so on I'm going fast like that that is called hadr and I did it like that just to show very how fast the Quran can go this is the end of our lesson here the point here, at the last part, it says the note. As a last point, I would like to say that all these modes of recitation are done while holding fast to the rules of tajweed. It's not that you do them and just do anything else, but those are different ways. And what someone else does now in beautifying his voice to recite, as long as he's holding to those rules, he can recite in those different ways. And that's considered tilawa, not qira'a, not riwaya, and not anything else, okay? Aqulu qali hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Alhamdulillah, let's go upstairs and offer salah with the brothers, inshallah.